안녕하세요. 마스터 코스 베이직 코스 디렉터를 맡고 있는 임세웅 원장입니다. Hello. This is Master Course Director Im Se-ung. Today I'm going to talk about Austin Implant Implant Component and its systems. So Austin Implant largely has one body and two body systems. So in case of two body systems, in the past they had submerged types, an SS and US systems. First, TS Implant is the one that is most popular and it can be used for all cases and it can also do one stage as well as two stage surgeries and there are clinical uh, convenience and that's why it's become the most popular one. For TS system, 11 degrees of tapering is there and also abutment and the implant is uh, connected as conical ceiling and it has double thread. And in case of TS system, mini and regular platform are available in case of mini 3.0, 3.5 and for regular from 4.0, all platforms filling abutment or general abutment are all compatible. But for mini and regular lines, it's all different healing abutment and abutment they are all different, it's because diameters are different. More recently, 3.0 line has been added and uh, mini implant is mostly used for anterior region. For 0.0 and 7.0, it's not implant that are used routinely. 5.0, uh, if there is a failure, it's not, it's not very stable, then you opt for the bigger ones. In terms of length, more recently, extra short has also been become available. From 4 to 6, the actual length are the same, but for 1, 2 millimeters, surface treatment are different. So this area can be above bone levels. So in reality, 5 and 4 millimeters of placements are possible. In case of 10 millimeters implant, this is the most popular one, and generally up to 13 millimeters are available on the market. In the past, TS2 implant was mostly used, but recently, this has become the most popular one, TS3. It has the adequate tapered level, and this adequate tapering in case of drilling, we use tapered drill and when we place the tapered implant is placed and with, through that we can gain adequate stability. For this implant, it's not routinely used because it has a strong tapering, so it um, has stronger stability. So if the bone quality is bad in the maxillar area and for selective cases, we can use this. For TS system, in case of bone quality is bad, where we had a wide GBL, like using cover screw, you can submerge, and healing abutment can be connected for also one stage surgery. Recently available case system, it looks very similar to TS, but what is different is tapered area, I said, 11 degrees, but for KS, it's 15 degrees. So 15 degrees tapering means that for TS um, implant, the tapering is stronger, meaning that in this area, the thick, it's thicker. So in terms of the posterior, you could have more resistance of the implant. So, but the basic structure are very much the same. KS, unlike the TS, all the platforms are same. So mini and regular do have and share uh, platforms. It doesn't have uh, different lengths. And TS and for KS, 
structurally uniqueness is this tapered area. So KS has stronger taper, so this wall thickness is compared to 11 degrees, it can, KS can be thicker. So in terms of the osseo integration, it can be uh, more stable, especially on the posterior side. For SS uh, system, personally, I prefer actually and like the system because SS system basically has uh, 1.8 to 0.84 height, so it cannot be submerged. It always needs to be non-submerged. So you can only do one-stage surgery. Tissue level, it needs to be placed at that level. It very has limited usage, so SS you cannot use in the anterior region and also the osseous space. If it's not sufficient, then also it cannot be used. However, I said I like SS system. The biggest reason of that is it has structural stability. So in the posterior area, single implant, especially if you have strong osseo occlusal force, then sometimes there could be mechanical problem. But for SS, this structure is very stable. So for the posterior single placement, my first uh, choice is wide neck SS system and a long term in terms of prognosis, gingival reaction, prosthetic complication probability is less. So if you take advantage of SS system, I think it can guarantee long term stability. So for an posterior single 5.0 wide net fixture is what I mostly offer at my clinic. So in terms of length, you have uh, from 6 millimeters available and up to generally 13 millimeters. Again, uh, recently, 3 line adequate tapered uh, systems is easier in terms of placement. Now for SS system, you don't place it on the bone level. If you place it on the bone level, then this polished surface uh, does not integrate with the bone. So there is no reason to go deep. If you inevitably have to go deep, then you should not opt for SS system, rather use a TS system. So generally, if it's not surface treated and this borderline where it's a uh, surface treatment different, then bone level was slightly by 0 0.1 going depth. So that is how you depth to depth control. So you have this type of system available. For me, if I use 2.8, then this margin is on the gingival level. So if but uh, so it can maintain the gingiva health, but it uh, can be suppressive place or on the EQ level. So it's not aesthetically. So recently I used more 1.8 and 8 for wide neck, well, especially 1.8. So sometimes margin could be on a sub level, but uh, recently patient even posterior area, they want aesthetics and to minimize black uh, triangle, I opt for more 1.8 rather than 2.8. So I think the strength of SS system is that connection stability is the biggest advantage. Now for the US system, implant system, it's a design based on brandmark system. And again, the US system is very similar to TS. It can be submerged as well as non-submerged. So one stage or two stage surgeries are all possible. And here, US system also, the butt has butt joint structure, so there's no uh, sink down. If it's a merge time with the occlusal uh, force, uh, it can go, go uh, sink down, but it has more structural stability for US system because surface meets surface. But it's not really popular these days because clinically there's a lot of incomplete. You have to put on impression coping and healing up when you connect healing abutment, second uh, surgery 
surgery compared to submerged time, it takes longer in terms of surgery time. And the biggest disadvantage is that if you go a bit deep, the sotherization where the bone melts up to the first level can sometimes happen. That's why it's not, it has become not so popular anymore. So many regular wide are the platforms available and because there are different platforms, you need to find the matching abutment and healing abutment. Generally, again, 10 millimeters are the most popular ones. And again, three lineups are the ones that are most popular. One stage, two stage surgery, again, are all possible. A bit different characteristics of implant. This is one body implant. And this one body implant is mostly used for the mandibular anterior region. Mandible, besides this area, there I do not believe has indication. So some Sometimes on the lateral incisor, on the upper area, you place it, but here the angle is different. The placement um, angle and abutment angle needs to be different, but this on here, abutment angle cannot be uh, adjusted. So sometimes you place it, and when you create prosthesis on the buccal area, prosthesis cannot be made sometimes. So because there is that chance on the mandibular side, the can go up straight. So on the mandibular anterior side, you use this system. Now it can only do one stage surgery. And for MS implant, uh, when you place the most important thing is stability. You have to have at least uh, have a stable at 30 newtons because in the MS system, immediate temporary is placed on the same day. But if the stability uh, force is low, then you cannot do immediate placement. So when you do placement, 30 newton, well, uh, from 20 to 30 newtons are something that you need to surgically secure. And it cannot bend as I told you. So besides mandible anterior area, uh, I do not recommend uh, using this system. Gingiva height, uh, clinically use mostly 2.5 diameter from 2 to 3 are available. But for me, I mostly opt for 3.0. Sometimes at our clinic, one body implant uh, breaks and um, you know, a patient comes in because of that. And when I get referral of those cases, it's really challenging because for one body implant, it's very hard to remove. So with the trapping bar, you have to all remove the bones, but the mandibular interior area buckle width is not sufficient. So sometimes it can result in bone defect. So if possible for me, uh, con considering this type of future possibility of fractures, I do not recommend using 2.0 as the final uh, system. So uh, here, if we, we compare all these systems for TSNKS, one to two, you know, going a bit back would be recommendation. SS, non-surface area, turret area, and this borderline, you have to put it on the Q level. And for the US, if you, there could be boneless, hence uh, it's better uh, not to go too deep. So in other words, SS, TS, and US. There are, these are three big groups and for TS and KS, they are like uh, very similar, like brothers. And my recommendation would be, first, before placement, what uh, implant you are going to use, you have to make that decision first beforehand. So you have to do surgery, the bone quality is not very 
good. So then uh, it's very hard to gain 20 newtons, or you have to do uh, a GBR or sinus graft. Then stability will be hard to gain, and you might have to be use a uh, go submerge. Then SS would be no uh, option. So TS3, TS4, something that you could um, use. So if all the conditions same, any implant would do. But for the posterior single implant, TS4 is my recommendation. So especially if occlusal force is really strong for number seven, six and seven, uh, SS, I do believe, has structural stability. Therefore, long term, uh, it, it can uh, be more successful. But if there's not much of a space on the uh, posterior and especially on the upper seven has come down, then from soft tissue to the opposing teeth, the distance, if it's less than six millimeters, then in the case, if you place SS system, then it will result in failure. The, you need at least 1.8 and 2.8 on the upper area gingiva to create prosthesis for SS system. So you, you might not have space, and then you have to do endo, or you have to do some other uh, treatment later on, uh, then you have trouble with the patient. So if there's not much of space on the posterior air, SS should not be US, you should at least use TS and US. And the aesthetic area, no TS and also not no US, because on the anterior you go uh, deep and with the US there could be bone loss. So again, TS will be your first choice. And case of bar over a denture, you don't really use that much, but sometimes you do. So it's about linking four to six uh, implant. Then TS, it um, says internal type, so it's very hard to connect. Of course, TS with the converter abutment, you can change into external type, but you don't really have to do that. So from the beginning, it's better to go uh, prosthetically uh, speaking with the US. In this case, there are various uh, systems that I opted for. Now, on the posterior single, my first choice is 5.0 wide neck implant. And this is uh, more long term stability. As for number six and seven, residual bone was about one to two millimeters. So for this area, TS4 compared to three has more taper, so you can have more stability. So here you could use TS4, but in most cases, in other most cases, TS3 are my routine go-to implant. With that, Today, I talked about various uh, OSTEN implant systems, its own advantages. So I would uh, recommend using them based on the indications. I hope in next time we can see face to face and maybe do hands on together and also uh, see my videos, then you will be able to understand this better. I hope uh, this lecture has been useful to you. Thank you very much.